Hello, I'm Atu George, and I bless God for this opportunity to bring God's truth to you today. Now, I can't wait to get into what the Spirit of God has placed in my lady, my heart to, to discuss and share with you today. But before we do that, can we call for that daily bread? Hear me, I told you yesterday again, attitude is everything. Thing. Praise God. So I want you to put up the right attitude right now. What's the right attitude? The attitude of faith. The Bible says we have the same spirit of faith. That spirit there actually means attitude. We have the same attitude of faith. So we mix the word we hear with faith. Now, when I say let's declare, I want you to declare it knowing that something is going to happen today. Now, that's the attitude of faith. Not just that, let me pray with this pastor for adventure. God will use this, is this prayer to do a miracle. That's not the right attitude. And when that is your attitude, it's only by the special message of God that anything is going to happen in your life. But hey, when your attitude is the attitude of faith, I believe that God is going to supply my needs today. I believe that I've got daily bread to receive today. I believe that he daily loads me with benefits. See that? Now, when that is your attitude, then join me right now. Praise God. Because that's my attitude too. I'm expecting a miracle to happen today. So if that's what you are expecting, join me with, with a smile on your face, with life in your spirit as we say, Say this word, say, Father, I receive today my daily bread. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, glory, it's coming to me now. Angels, go out and bring all that will meet my needs today. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Praise God. Listen, expect a miracle and i told you listen when we talk about daily bread not just talking about money money is just one part of it praise god he told us he daily loads us with benefit so david said this i'm one notary said bless the lord oh my soul and do not forget all his benefits glory to god and he began to list them he said who forgives all your iniquities praise god he does forgive all your iniquity so i'm not going to walk around today thinking oh it's the sin i committed yesterday that is making god not to speak to me oh i i know i know i've offended god come on now you know there are many lies people have 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 believed and they walk in many lies many lives and it's affecting your life you know the lord was talking to me yesterday and it was we're just having fellowship i was having fellowship with the lord and the lord told me some things i said whoa and then he said to me he said you know you know you know you know your problem and that's the problem with my children i said what is it lord he said you've got trust issues i said yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> We've got trust issues, praise God. Yeah, see, what, what does mean trust issues? You don't trust him enough. But he is ever faithful. But we always think, what if he fails? See, that's the trust issues, praise God. Can you bank your life on his faithfulness? Can you make a plan and know that he will be there waiting for you when you come? That is trust. We have faith. We demonstrate faith. But we haven't learned really how to walk in trust. See? So, you hear, thank you Holy Spirit. And I want you to understand, you see, when, when the truth comes straight, many people have a problem with it because they have so bounded their minds with religion. So, somebody says, the Spirit of God left me. I said, really? How? When? I actually did something wrong. And since that day I did that thing, the Spirit of God left me. And they say, wow. He said, I've been praying and praying, but 
I, I know maybe you committed adultery or maybe maybe you committed fornication or maybe you I don't know just think about what worst thing you can do now has as holy and um, Christian like that sounds but I tell you the truth that that person is telling a lie you say what do you mean it's a lie the Spirit of God did not leave him. He is only being emotional and withdrew himself from the Spirit of God. I, I will tell you the truth. It doesn't matter how it sounds in your ears. I will tell you the truth. God... You know, you know, sometimes we we'll say, oh, God's eyes are holy. He does not behold iniquity. So, you see, with that mindset, we we'll say, oh, because I did something wrong, he has shut his eyes against me. So, he's not going to look at me again. Okay? It sounds, it sounds good in the ears of a religious person. Yes, because when you do something wrong, so God should deal with you. Okay, go to your Bible. From the very first book of the Bible, we find a man who's called Cain. Cain had a brother called Abel. And both of them went to offer sacrifice before the Lord. And this was God dealing with these people. And God accepted Abel's sacrifice. He did not accept Cain's sacrifice. And Cain began to be angry and he began to sulk. And God showed up to him in his state and said, Cain, What's the problem? Why are you angry? And said, hey, because now, now guess what? God was talking to Cain. Why are you angry, Cain? Because you accepted my brother's sacrifice and you did not accept my own. He was even putting up an attitude before the Lord. And the Lord said to him, yes, if you have done what was right, it would have been accepted. Meaning Cain knew what was right to do, but didn't do it. So God said, if you had done what was right, it would have been accepted. So God, God even told him, he gave him an opportunity to go make it right. And told him the reason. Because sin is lying at the door. Cain, check it out. Sin is lying at the door of your heart. And the next thing we see, Cain didn't listen to the word of God. He, he didn't obey God. Rather, he carried on with his bitterness and anger and he killed his brother. After Cain killed his brother, God still came to him and says, Cain, where is your brother? Can you see God was still talking to Cain after he committed murder? And you are telling me God have left you because you did what? You're lying against him. He has said, he will never leave you nor forsake you. You see, now, now, you know, when, when you say things like this, someone begins to think, what do you mean? You mean, even if I do wrong, the presence of God will still be in my life? Yes! I'll give you another example. Samson. Samson was anointed. And the Bible says from time to time, the Spirit of God will come upon him. And then he will go do, I mean, Spirit of mind will come upon him. He will go do physical things and destroy things. Now the Bible told us one time, something went somewhere. And the Bible says he slept with a prostitute all night till the morning. <laughs> now what would you call that? Now, this was the Old Testament that when you, there was no grace, you know, like we think. There was no grace that when you sin, oh, there's a big blow coming on you. That was the Old Testament, praise God. And Samson slept with a prostitute all night. By morning, there was a shout that, hey, the, the, the Philistines. The Bible says Samson got up from the house of the prostitute and the anointing came upon him. The Spirit of God came upon him and he went and pulled a whole gate, you know, <laughs> and pulled that gate. The anointing did not fail because of his sin. You see, people don't understand this, so they blackmail God and then they cheat themselves. 
So can I, can I, can I go on doing all the wrong things? You know, that's why some people are confused because there are there, you get into situations, you see, you see this guy, you know all the wrong things he's doing, and yet it, it looks like God is still using him. And then it's, it looks confusing. You think God's going to punish him, but God is using him. You see, I'll tell you the truth. This is God for you. You see, as long as that person shows up in his place of assignment, God will use him. It doesn't matter what he has done. All that thing will say, oh, uh, the Spirit of God left me because I did something wrong. The Spirit of God did not leave you. You are the one who turned your back on the Spirit of God. The challenge, and I'll tell you the truth, the challenge here is, and this is why we live righteous lives. The challenge here is you don't want to be used by God and at the end of the day, you become a castaway. Is that possible? Very, very possible. See, because to enter into life, hear me, hear me, to be used of God is one thing. To be blessed of God is another thing. Now get this right. Anyone God uses, he would reward but the reward is not always the blessing. To be blessed, there are criteria that God must confirm in your life before he releases the blessing on you. And I've told you this before, a blessed man is not known until his third generation. You see that now? A blessed man is not known until his third generation. What do you mean his third generation? Yo, you, know, you know, think about it. I, if, if God have blessed me, you will not know. You see, it's not what I walk in today that proves that I'm blessed. It's not the cars I drive today that proves that I'm blessed. No, it's not. It's not. It's not the crowd you see following me today that proves that I'm blessed. No, it's not. You will know I am blessed by the time my children come up and walk in the same light that I walked in, and then they get into the third, that means my grandchildren, you see them walking in the same light that I was walking. A man can have all the stuff, which I call them rewards today, and that is the end of his life. It is done. The moment he dies, you find no trace of his walk. You find no trace, you know what I mean? Pre present, current trace of his walk or the extension of his walk. You don't find it. It's gone, it's gone. And soon all those physical wealth begin to diminish and it dries away. And, and you, you used to say, oh, uh, my father was this. Said, you? Are you serious? Don't tell a lie, please. Because it wasn't obvious. It's not obvious. You, you, you begin to doubt them. So now, to be blessed, you must meet criteria. And those criteria have to do with your character and your person. You see that now? So you don't want to live a life serving God, doing all the work for God. You know, the Bible says, listen, Paul said, he says, don't be deceived. No fornicator, no adulterer, no liar. Will, will, will enter into the kingdom of heaven. That's the truth. You cannot enter. So one can be used on the earth here and that's all. God is done with you and, and, and you still find yourself in hell. Jesus said it. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom. Why? Because they didn't fit. They didn't fit. To be used on this earth is one thing. To be known in heaven is another thing. You are not known in heaven by your acts on the earth. You are known in heaven by the becoming that you become. Personal. Not before the eyes of men. Personal. And this is the truth. There is no one that will behold the glory of God. None. There is none. Uh, that person has to be the most stupid and useless human being on the face of the earth that will behold the glory of God and is not transformed into that image. So you see, it is easy for one to contact the anointing and begin to use the anointing. I don't know why I'm sharing these things with you today. This is not what I plan to share with you. But I believe the Spirit of God is speaking to someone. It is, it is easy to contact the anointing and, and start using that anointing and not living the life. But God is more interested in you living 
the life. What is living the life? Becoming Him, becoming like Him. And let me tell you something, think about everything that Jesus represents. That's how He wants you to be. And then that's why the Bible says, hey, this is the confidence we'll have on the day of judgment. Because as He is, so are we in this world. See that? As he is, so are we in this world. He's not just talking about healing the sick, casting out devil. He's talking about character, belief, our mindsets. We think alike. We, we, we reason alike. See that now? There is no way you'll be growing in these things and you'll continue sinning. It's just so impossible. It's impossible. It can't happen. Because you, you, can, you can walk into the kingdom of heaven with sin. You can't. It's impossible. You can't. So, so you can do all the work and God will say, thank you. Thank you, sir. But you see that? Sorry, you can't enter here. Why? You're not putting on the wedding garment. Now, what is the wedding garment? The wedding garment is the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit tells of the characters of that fruit. Love, joy, peace, you know, you know, you, you, you see those character, you see the characteristics of the fruit of the Spirit walking in you. Anyone who is truly operating by the Spirit of God, you will see him manifesting this fruit. So when you find a man who looks to be anointed, and you think he's anointed because of the things he does, Oh, he commands sick people to be healed and they are healed. Oh, he does. No, no, you, you really know an anointed man of how much of Christ has he become. Because the easiest place for the anointing to walk is in the outward. Very easy. Very easy. I can charge myself up with that anointing for two, three hours. Charge myself up and go do stuff. But I, then after I'm, doing, after I'm done doing all those things, I'm still the same person. But he said the walk is in yielding your personality to that anointing to begin to break you and form you into his image. My time is up. I pray the Spirit of God help you. I pray he causes his life and grace to fill you and bring you into that place of oneness with him that you will see him for who he is and become that which you see in the name of the lord jesus christ amen praise god i'll see you tomorrow bye